Jesus in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4, was preparing his disciples for his own home going and homecoming. He was preparing his disciples for when he was crucified and would no longer be with them. Notice what he says to them. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may also. And whither I go you know, and the way you know. The Lord wanted to eat this last Passover with His disciples. When it became His time and the cross was looming before Him. At the meal, He begins to talk to and alludes that one of His disciples sitting with Him was going to betray Him. He did not name Him, but He did let the disciples know that it was one of the twelve that was going to betray him. That would have been a little despondent. The disciples, of course, wanted to know, is it me, is it me, is it me? Jesus, Jesus never told them that it was Judas Iscariot. You see, God was allowing some space so that Judas could even repent over the fact that he had betrayed the Lord of glory. Right up until the time that Judas committed and committed suicide, he had an opportunity to repent of his sin and call upon the name of the Lord. Now how do I know that? Because there was a thief on the cross beside Jesus. One thief did not recognize him. Both of them railed on him. But one thief finally got it. This is the Lord. We're rightfully being judged for what we've done. But He hasn't done any wrong. And then He looked at the Lord and said, Lord, remember me when you enter into paradise. And what did Jesus say? Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. The last minute. We know the end of that thief. He was going to die. He didn't have time to join a church. And he really didn't have time to be water baptized. He didn't have time to be sprinkled or anointed with oil or any other mode of baptism. But what he did have time was to confess Jesus as Lord. And that's what we have to do to be born again. We have to confess Jesus as Lord to the glory of God the Father. And Jesus gave him hope said. Today you shall be with me in paradise. You see, Jesus knew where He was going. Jesus knew He needed to stop in the belly of the earth, in paradise, to take care of matters. He didn't go straight to heaven that day, when the first day that He was in the grave. He went and preached to the captives in paradise and let them know that their faith, Moses and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and all the saints that went on before Him, He wanted them to know He had come. And that their faith had not been in vain. But He was also letting those who did not believe to let them know that their judgment was sure. Because He went down into hell and He got the keys to hell, death, and the grave, and brought him with him when he got up, when he rose on the third day. The serpent bruised his heel, but Jesus crushed the head of the serpent when he was dying on the cross. So he rides victoriously, and he had a message that the disciples needed to understand. Do not let your heart be troubled. He knew they would be because He knew all things. But not only was there going to be betrayal, Jesus told them that He was going to die. 
And Peter, you know, good old Peter, the one that likes to wash his feet in his mouth, uh, he speaks up. And said, everybody else will deny you, but not me, Lord. And Jesus rebuked him and said, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. So now, they hear about betrayal, and they hear about denial, and they hear about death, and Jesus gives them a great encouragement. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't let these problems get you down. Because He knew He had a cure for the troubled heart. He knew that He had a cure that would prepare them for their homecoming and their home going later on. But He needed to secure them so that they would preach the Gospel and the church would grow. He didn't need to leave a bunch of discouraged, despondent disciples behind who would quit. So He tells them and leaves them a word, a word of comfort. Notice this truth. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us and all that believe on His name so that when we can be reunited with Him and all who have gone on before us. He's going to prepare a place for us, folks. And some folks' places are prepared a lot quicker than somebody else because they've already gone on to Jesus to get their reward. Amen? And although we are sorrowful for that, Jesus would say to us, even in our grieving process, do not be troubled. Remember what David said when his child died. He said, I cannot bring the child back to me but I can go to Him. Amen? As much as we'd love to bring our loved ones who've gone on before us and have them with us, one thing we can know, if we walk with Jesus and we keep our faith pure before the Almighty God, one of these days, there's going to be a great homecoming day and we're going to be reunited with our loved ones and our Lord of glory. Amen? Amen. Oh man, that's a good place to say amen. Let not your heart be troubled. They had disturbing news. Jesus would be leaving them and for the time being, they could not follow. This Jesus spake of His death. Can you imagine that? Some of your loved ones are fixing to leave you and you don't know it when you'll ever see them again. I remember coming back from college one weekend. I'd been away from my family and my mom and my daddy for a while. And I thought, how great is it going to be to see my family? It's an eight-hour drive from Tennessee where I went to school to my home. And I was driving along and I got almost home. And some little can decided to jump up and tear up my transmission. You know, I'm glad I live in Georgia because back then, folks would stop and help you. I really, I sat there for a few minutes and I prayed and I said, Lord, I really don't want to have to walk all that distance, but I will. But it sure be nice if you'd send somebody along. <laughs> and it wasn't long before somebody came and took me home. For that little while, my heart was troubled because I hadn't made it home yet. My desire was there. But troubles came and it stopped. But having a faith in God helped me to overcome the trouble. And God, because I did not allow the trouble to weigh down my heart so I could have faith, answered that prayer and sent a good Samaritan to take me home. Because I noticed if I got me home, my daddy could fix the car. That was, that was no biggie. He was good at stuff like that. And I knew I'd be in there greasy too, helping him. And when I got home, I was happier than when I left Tennessee because I had trouble that I thought was going to stop me. And God made me an overcomer. And when I saw Mom and Dad and knew that I'd made it. Friends, it's going to be like that one day. You're going to have troubles in this old world. You just can't help it. Jesus said, In the world you shall have tribulation. 
but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus said, you're going to have it. You're a good child of God. You're a believer. And that doesn't exempt you from trouble. But one thing's for sure. You've got a great big God. Amen. And that's the second thing Jesus told them. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He said, that's your answer. The answer for a troubled heart is a heart full of faith in Almighty God and His Son. Jesus Christ. I don't care what comes in your life, whether it be relationship, whether it be finances, whether it be the workplace, it can be anything that might come and trouble your peace for a while. But if you'll keep your faith in God, if you'll keep your faith in an Almighty God who loves you and cares for you, I guarantee you, you'll see the light at the end of the tunnel and there won't be a train coming at you. It'll be the light of God's glory. Because the interesting thing about the shepherd, he leads us through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. He doesn't leave us in it. Jesus came to take us out of darkness and bring us into His light and bring us into light. Amen? And so one of these great homecoming days, as much as I want to see my mama and my daddy and my grandma and grandpa and all those other dozens and dozens that went on ahead of me, I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus that John the Revelator saw on the Isle of Patmos. I want to see Him with the shining face and the white robe of righteousness and His glory being manifested. Amen. That He, and then He shows His male friends. There's a song now. No scars in heaven. Have you heard it? When you get to heaven, all your scars will be gone. The only scar that's going to be in heaven is the nail prints in our Lord's hands. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. God's going to wipe away all tears from our eyes. Amen. All that was bad and wrong, God's going to make right. Amen. And if you'll just trust Him and keep on plodding on, I want to tell you, there's coming a homecoming day. And in that homecoming day, there's going to be a feast. Amen. I don't think Jews eat pork, so I don't know that there's going to be any ham there. But uh, we'll have a great time anyway. We'll have some angel food. <laughs> we'll have some meat because Jesus talked about meat. We'll have some living water because Jesus talked about that. But it's going to be a great marriage supper of the Lamb. He said, you believe in God, believe also in Me. In other words, trust in God and trust in Me. His antidote for a troubled heart is to have faith first that there is a God. The problem with some people today that they have to seek medicine and other things to help their mental health is because they don't believe in a God. I want to tell you, Jesus can take care of your mental health. Amen? Jesus came that you might have life and that more abundantly. Jesus came to give you a peace unlike anything that the world knows. A lasting peace. And He came to give you grace that is sufficient for everything in your life. Amen. I don't see how anybody can look out here and see the glory out here and not admit that there's a God. But not only that, I don't see how anybody can go into a nursery, or if they allow them, they didn't allow it in my day when my boys were being born. You couldn't go in the labor room. But sometime today, they, they've got this new age stuff going that they can go in there and watch everything. But to see a newborn baby take its first breath. Listen, you can't look in that baby's face and not say there's not a God. The very fact that he has breath that He breathed in reminds us of what He did to Adam who was nothing but a lump of dust. Amen? Amen. He breathed into Adam and Adam became a living soul. The breath comes into that child and that child becomes a living soul. Amen. Oh, how we need to preserve life. Oh, how we need to look around us. I, I, I see everything's happening. I'm just saying, Lord, just please 
send the rain and, and help us with this heat because those flowers are looking so pretty. Amen. Those azaleas. Those hydrangeas. Everything's looking so pretty. The, you know, I love Easter when, when you go out there and, and you see the trees. White. The dogwoods with the little prints in the petals. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And one of these days, we're going to get to heaven and we're going to see a tree that is for the healing of the nations. <laughs> Amen. There'll be no more Satan. There'll be no more sin. There'll be no more evil. But we will have eternal life in Jesus Christ. And we will enjoy. Amen. Now, I'm not taking a bus load right now, so don't be afraid of that. I'm not trying to get a bus load to go to heaven today. Amen. But God is good. But one thing I would say is don't be afraid of going to heaven. Amen. Don't be afraid of death because quite frankly, folks, that's the statement we've made. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. But right now, that's the only way you get there. Amen. But for the child of God, we don't fear death because Jesus has given us eternal life. And although this old body is placed in the ground and returns to the dust, our spirit and our soul, for the moment we die, for the present of God Almighty. Amen? Amen? It's just a short, quick jump to heaven. Amen? Keep the faith. Live in faith. Look forward to the homecoming like I did this one. So there was great encouragement given by Jesus about a great God who had a great promise. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. What a promise. Amen. Jesus says, if you keep the faith, then I'm going on a mission. And my mission is preparing a place for you to live eternally. And when I am done, I'm coming back. And I'm going to get you. And then you're going to be with me. And we will never be separated again. Amen. That is the most beautiful thing when I let my daddy go. My dad had been sick for a little bit. We actually thought we were going to get him to come home. In fact, they told us if he started getting better on Wednesday, they'd start rehabilitation and we would get, take him home in a couple of days. And so I left Monday believing that. I left believing that my daddy said he'd see me the next morning. And the next morning, Tuesday at 6 o'clock, I got a call from my sister that my daddy had gone on. But previous to that, when I visited with him, I had my son, Josh, the older boy. And I said, let's pray with Dad. He was in a state where I knew he could hear us, but his eyes was not open and he could not see us with his eyes. He could hear us. And so we gathered around and we said, Daddy, we're going to take care of Mama. So don't you worry about her. And if you're just tired of fighting and you need to rest, then go ahead. We'll miss you. But there's no need for you to be struggling when you've got a great reward coming. If you want to go on home to be with Jesus, we're not holding you here if that's why you're hanging around. Because we were hoping to take you home and again, a couple of days, he went on to be with the Lord. And here's the good thing. One of these days, either by the grave or by the rapture, I'm going to see my daddy again. I'm going to see my mama again. I'm going to see my sisters who have gone on before, my brother. There's, I'm going to see those who have gone on before. If I live in faith, I will see them again. I can't bring them back to me. 
but I can sure go to them. And I want to tell you, that makes living life a whole lot better. Amen. That means whatever life throws at me, I can overcome it because why? Because this ain't the end, folk. <laughs> this ain't the stop. Amen? I'm just a pilgrim in this world passing through, going to a better place. Amen? And all the dicks and bruises and all the, the hurts and words and whatever that comes against me, I'm going to be healed of all that because there are no scars in heaven. And I can be healed of it today through Jesus Christ. He has a wonderful way of healing the broken heart. He has a wonderful way of healing this old physical body. He has a wonderful way of healing the mind. He has a wonderful way of healing all manner of addictions. I've seen drug addicts, alcoholics, delivered by the power of God. Not have gone through a rehabilitation program. They just got tired of being tired. They just got tired of being sin. They have got tired of a life that I have to figure out what I need to steal next to get my next fix. They got tired of that. And when they got tired of it, they called upon God and God was always there. And God raised them up and delivered them. Amen? I'm glad for a God that knows how to deliver and to set us free. What is this great promise? He said, in my Father's house. Talking about heaven. In my Father's house. Do you know, I believe that God might be partly Filipino. When we were in the Philippines, most of their families lived in the same house. Even when they got grown and got married, many of them came and lived in the same house. And that's the same way the Jewish culture did. They lived in the same house. They just added more rooms on them. And we have read for years, in my father's house are many mansions. Now you need to remember that the King James Version was translated into the Elizabethan language. In that day, they called their house manses. And if you had more than one house, it was mansions. Okay? We got rid of the word manse and just shortened mansions to mansion. And so, for their language, for the people who read the King James Version when it was first translated, they would not understand the culture of the Jewish people as we do today. And so, if we read this according to what the language says, what the Greek language says, in my Father's house are many dwelling places. In other words, God's going to spend all this time saving us, and then He's going to scatter us across heaven? No, He wants us close. He wants close fellowship. Amen? Because we're family. Amen. We're family through Jesus Christ. We're adopted by the Spirit of God. And God wants His children close to Him. Amen? Amen. I used to sing that song, Just Build Me a Cabin in Glory. I tell you what, Lord, just give me a place at Your feet. That will be fine enough for me. I don't need a mansion. I don't need a log cabin. I just need to be close to You. Amen? I just need to be close to the One who loved me enough to send His own dear Son that He might die and rise from the dead that I might have life through Jesus Christ. He says there's many mansions, there's many rooms or literally dwelling places. Then He says, I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you. <coughs> what is He saying? Good old South Georgia, I'll come back and get you. <laughs> Amen. I come fetch you by and by. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to come back. I'm leaving for a short while. God's time, not ours. But I'm coming back. And I'm going to get the disciples together. And everyone that believes in the name of Jesus Christ and who has faith in Jesus Christ 
will all be caught up regardless of what other name they stick on themselves. It doesn't matter whether they call themselves Baptist or Methodist or Presbyterian or Pentecostal or Charismatic or non-denominational or non-faith, whatever. It doesn't matter those other tags. What matters to God is have you been born again? Except a man be born again, he will in no wise save the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So whether you're a Baptist or a Methodist or a Presbyterian or Episcopalian or whatever, the requirement to get to heaven is to be born again through Jesus Christ. Amen. And then we can call ourselves whatever else we want to. God is gracious to us. God has given us a way. Notice what He said. He says, the way you know. I'm not leaving you in a lurch. Verse 4, you know the way. Now here's a problem we have, and I'm coming to a close, in the time that we live in. There are people that are trying to teach in America and somewhat throughout the world that there are many ways to God. It's a lie. It's a lie from the pits of hell. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father but by me. Amen. 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 There is no other way to God. I love my Muslim friends. And I love my Jewish friends. And I love those Hindus and Buddhists and whatever other religions that they are. But friends, I want to tell you, there's only one way to God and it's through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. It is through His death and His resurrection that we are justified before God. It is through His death and His resurrection we can confess our sins and He will forgive us our sins and give us eternal life. And then when we accept Him, it's very simple. It's free. It won't cost you a dime. Because grace is free. You know what coming to Jesus costs you? Sin. And the wages of sin. For the wages of sin is death. Amen. Amen. That's what it costs you. God takes your sins away. God takes away the wage of death. And then it's returned... God gives you forgiveness and cleansing and it gives you hope and peace and comfort. Amen. I want to tell you there's no better life to live than a life of a Christian. Amen. A child of God. Notice what it says. Jesus is preparing a place for all that believe in Him. There's coming a great homecoming day. Are you ready for it? Are you looking for it? Amen. Our brother's coming.